will continue and based on the previous exploits we'll talk about uh, a dry subject in the first part presentation and uh, if we have some time left at the end um, since I'm the last one I will ask you to stay a bit longer uh, because at the very end I w I'll give you two short demos that's it Tomacho okay. Kredi What are, what are exapackers? The simplest definition possible is programs that, um, that encrypt uh, or, um, or pack other programs and still keep them in a runnable state on the given operating system. So they work in a kind of transparent way. Only the structure of the programs start, they start, they run, retaining all functionality. Where do they come from? I started to deal with computer technique 15 years ago. There were cr cruncher programs at that time. Uh, we didn't have too many legal products in the country, so we actually co copied cassettes from cassettes. And uh, there was a blinking logo, that was the Commodore 64 Croucher. And then uh, uh, they were, that, there was a kind of legacy for the next period. These, they were the popular products of the, the age. I used an artery, so actually I was let out of the Commodore craze when the first hackers and packers uh, were much more sophisticated, but whatever they stole used for making music. And then we used, uh, that was in the early 80s when we have the PCs, the Ashcom Exapack, um, IBM PCs, and then who that with that didn't uh, work for installing Windows, and uh, if there were packer programs or zip programs, then there had to be programs that either automatically, semi-automatically, or manually could could pack and unpack programs and cones and streams and uh, whatever. Uh, Ampeg uh, was on the DOS, and uh, ZUP, Z -U -P, which, which had a good engine. And now we are in the Windows era. The first PA crypt were, were kind of fledgling. Uh, trials six to eight years ago there were only two or three and then uh, an avalanche started and then uh, such as uh, armadillo AS pack fsg upx Irfan view as a surface application BS player as a VDA player and a uh, uTorrent client uh, with third party applications. Most of the people don't know about them, they work in the same way, uh, only the size is smaller. But later on, I will speak about the the importance of size. And they are used uh, for their secondary purpose for, uh, and not for program protection. And then, uh, so heaps of malware, they form a part of commercial copy protections. Uh, and they use the same kind of technologies for uh, firewalls protections uh, to hide the, the code, to make it unmodifiable. Uh, against any kind of hacker cracker or whatever. And then there is an additional category, non-welcome applications such as cracks and key, key uh, It will be explained later. It is problematic because 
uh, from an anti antivirus point they are malicious programs but their operation in itself is not malicious it so we cannot uh, label them as malicious because they won't uh, uh, upset the computer because they use the same kind of packers that are normally used uh, there is an extra packer collection of which we must know that um, it is not a virus buster or collection but it was born with the cooperation of many antivirus firms as a cooperation uh, researcher developer lab people uh, share these kind of things there is a common source uh, they upload it i usually organize this common source and uh, the categorization and what uh, we can say that uh, we have cryptors and the most of it is uh, made up by 41 percent is made up by cryptors and different pack types uh, the, these are the current uh, current um, ratios uh, cryptors compressors protectors installers cryptors are uh, uh, cryptors which do not pack compressors pack of course but otherwise they don't do anything else and protectors do both uh, a kind of amalgamate uh, both uh, harmful and positive uh, properties of the of the first two installers are nothing uh, but but they appeared with the Linux uh, uh, installers um, they use similar technology and we must deal with their uh, pro process processing because they use malware who either a part is malware or uh, it is uh, within a smaller package mm. this is the white to black harmful level of harmfulness pure white are the commercial uh, protections uh, the primary problem with this is that these in uh, most of the cases uh, on runnable platforms pure clean copies protected from uh, cracking from uh, being modified but as far as technology is concerned these protectors are the the top and they therefore represent most of the program uh, they stop us to emulate through them and so on the medium category are questionable grays so either on malware or pure file appear it is always questionable for an antivirus company uh, freeware program manufacturers use them freeware packers you uh, whoever writes an application makes it free doesn't want to spend money on any other hiding for his own code and then we have the black as night as the night it's a very rewa rewarding category because 99 percent of his malware we can uh, process them and we don't have to think about them too much this is what they look like structures capabilities internals it started for from uh, compression from limited memory uh, because of the limited memory compression was the primary task uh, uh, to save space on Winchester nowadays with the huge uh, several gigabyte terabyte Winchester it is no, no, no use anymore it doesn't matter if an exa is five megabyte or several uh, five megabytes that comes from the old thinking encryption uh, developed in the meantime and uh, those who know Windows uh, exe import and export tables are are quite uh, obvious they would like to hide them and there are the anti-debugger anti-virtual machine tricks 
and uh, so they protect uh, the program with uh, from any kind of debugger and uh, they they wouldn't like to have uh, any steering from any virtual machine they can be adjusted set replaced uh, but hardware manufacturers would like to make sure that if a malware starts then uh, it should be uh, a real active machine because if it's a virtual machine then it's very diffi difficult to to catch and block code replacement from a couple of bytes to long spaces to long strings and now we get to the point of the top technology of today on custom virtual machines again it is a wide circle cisco based cisco based embedded packers within six there is a risk and uh, more or less they are there is a native instruction in the original code they magnify into 4,000 or several tens of thousands instructions and so so many force instructions instructions will be executed during the execution of the original single instruction if I use it cleverly then it's a very good trick and a very fortunate idea it won't load the whole computer uh, they put it on a small code section uh, on which they have their technology or commercial products and uh, it is called once during the time of initialization it runs once and the rest is in native code it doesn't slow down uh, and doesn't load the processor additionally now some obscure programming languages reappeared they are problematic from the point of processing a shell basic program wouldn't uh, pose any problem anybody could write a couple of uh, encrypted uh, uh, packing lines uh, with an X uh, throwing out part there are the P code option which makes it problematic for Visual Basic which is not using nat native Windows 32 code but the so-called black code which is its own language and uh, it's much more difficult to get hold of it with assembler to process it with an assembler and if somebody wants to load it into an emulator it's again very problematic with time people understood that uh, that less can be more a simpler language uh, can be much more it's much simpler to analyze than such a p-code here I must make an additional remark how we destroy the myth and how we, it is it can be regarded as mythical that present defense causes any kind of run problems or any injuries to the computer there are two stories you've heard about rootkit scandal the because of the rootkit component uh, it was uh, widely echoed in the media sony came out of it with, uh, harmed and uh, they, it was shown that even big firms turn to devices that are unethical and the other one is the story of star force that's a russian company many people says that uh, technology implemented by star force may may uh, destroy the uh, writer cd dvd writer nobody could really prove it Nobody could really prove it if, if any machine was destroyed, but whatever Star Force used this technology were uh, um, grabbed in, into the inside structures of the operating systems and they went beyond the, the limits of ethical behavior.
how we can rewrite and modify a function within an operating system to use the RAL modules. But in a basic situation, we might state uh, whatever is written well uh, won't cause any harm in anybody's machine. If uh, you would like to avoid the operation of packers and drivers, you don't, you have uh, unfounded fears. How can we identify and process them? We, there is an exa and we sh should be able to decide if it's packed or not. And then at the end, uh, within the demo, I will show you with hex editor, as anybody can uh, can really uh, jump at it. Even the characteristic there will reveal certain things. Strings will show strings. Even these strings can could be a break break type of information which doesn't say anything. Anybody can can push down the break pedal. What is characteristic here is entropy calculations for packing, due to packing, these, the entropy of these programs uh, will uh, grow and there will be an additional layer above the native layer and uh, those who saw these kind of things uh, have a certain experience to judge it uh, uh, from visual appearance. Automated solutions were put in place. Simple sequences were used for detection, PEID and RDG uh, protection ID. These are the better known uh, programs with a simple GUI and also a large uh, sequence based database, which on the basis of the sequence will try to identify whether uh, we are encountering uh, known objects or not. Those who have an antivirus scanner log, uh, this is often swallowed, but in the command line, uh, several pieces of information can be obtained and useful information can be gained from this about uh, hackers. And what can we do about this? First of all, we can process it in a native way. So we fully analyze the given packer. We understand the encryption mechanism and the compression, of course. The decompression and decryption can be written. and run in a native environment up to a certain point due to complexities and the energy invested so that we can keep track of uh, releases and update it as you saw looking at the numbers we're talking about a thousand versions and packers and it's quite a lot of man hours to uh, produce all that in writing and v32 emulation could be the other the solution used uh, to go through the outer layer antivirus uh, companies to this very date like this quite a lot we try to create a v32 environment and uh, run the code that is inserted on top of uh, the program we try to identify the end of the add-on uh, code and uh, when it gets back to the original application and then the code can be analyzed there are hybrid solutions as well merging the previous two so that emulation isn't too slow i'll give you an example the, in the case of virtual machines if one byte is magnified to 10,000 bytes or even a lot more, this could enhance the number of embed uh, instructions. And there are all kinds of uh, tricks that malware uh, producers uh, use executing cycles, apparently reading and writing from and to the memory, but doing nothing really. And the antivirus engine's emulation is pushed to the very extreme. And emulation includes a certain limit as to the number of instructions it wants to reach. And it's not only emulation that is slow and we want to speed up. There are techniques that recognize the generally used and typical uh, AP-lib and Z-lib and that sort of compression algorithms. So these are easy to recognize. 
on the basis of analysis. And these are decompressed into native code. And there's a simple zip driving the emulator. And it knows that there's a five-line assembly code, which must be executed in the emulator. And AP-lib stream will have to be decompressed and then hand back to the emulator and then hand back control so that decompression can become a lot faster. If none of these should work, then there's the simple manual approach, which I will present. You take a hex editor, a debugger, and go step by step and go through the outer layer and reach the original code. So how do we approach this from an antivirus standpoint? First of all, in the very first point, and few people know about this, especially those not involved in the antivirus business on a daily basis, we can safely say that every day six to eight gigabytes worth of different malware is generated. And this seems a lot, a lot, but it's true. Over several years, malware producers have been using polymorphism and variants. First of all, they take a polymorph uh, packer. If they do it twice, then MD5 will be different, a different key, different instructions on the packer side. But they won't stop here, because they usually add another layer an aut automated mechanism, which on the server side will every five minutes um, do the polymorphism again. So every 10 minutes, they can change the original code and shift the lobs, and the code will stay the same, but its appearance will uh, change, and new linears will follow, and polymorph uh, packing will be added. So on an hourly or daily basis, the process sequences can be changed, and the outcome will be quite different. And working backwards, thousands of various patterns can be generated on a website. Every five minutes, a new binary code sequence can appear, and it can um, be contagious and uh, infect the computer. It just depends on the update frequency. And URLs uh, can't so easily be made to disappear. And as for ISPs, it will be a much bigger problem to fight these off and remove uh, the malware uh, detected URLs. Secondly, what can we do about this? The previous suggestion is uh, one of the options, a uh, Windows um, 32 emulator uh, that is so good that would uh, pass over 80 to 90 percent of the packers. And if we produce a virtual environment that is very well emulated, then it will bring us to very effective instructions. And that's one option. The other one is also very effective. It's to blacklist them. Because if you recall the previous slides, I mentioned that the black category is the easiest to manage for us, because if the black encryption is the category given, then based on the sequence, the packer can be recognized. And we can rely on this, because we can be sure that when we encounter such a packer, um, the probability is less than a point, point, uh, one percent. So if such a packer occurs, then it's very unlikely that it should be uh, clean. They're used for malware. And the other thing is that we try to keep track of the license. And again, this ties back to the categories before. I mentioned that the most problematic uh, packers belong in the white uh, category because they're the commercial uh, protections that are the most difficult to handle from a technology point of view. And 90% of these are running on clean applications, generic dot emida um, emulations, if I recognize all of them. 
and 60% of my clients will send me trouble tickets saying that they have clean programs that they bought licenses for and they don't want us to detect them as viruses. So then what we do is a profit from the EM detection and defense systems that they include internal protection for the licenses and license keys. And there is license information included. So all the products that are protected will have the license information, including the company. And that's useful because every now and then there are cracked versions on the web. And of course, people who want to write malware will find those and after that, we can't clearly say that they are clean because sometimes there's malware included. But if we check the license that's included, then the terminal version license can be the basis for us to say that that becomes the black category because it's cracked or illegally released. And the IEEE project, which is a related subject, is taking shape right now. and. Let me just mention as a comment that for a time it was a problem that we as an antivirus company wanted to communicate with and approach various white category protector authors because their primary standpoint was that they wanted protection for their technology and they had little understanding that we didn't want to actually burst through their code and bust their protection. We just wanted to identify them and make sure that they were not infected with malware. And of course, if we had some cooperation, we could do so more easily. But uh, for quite some time, they would not give us any information. And um, they saw this as benefit for us, first of all. If we could get information, whether the uh, program was infected or not, because uh, this wasn't their vested interest, they thought. But recently, we've managed to establish, uh, establish contacts with many of them. And then 6 to 12 months, this is likely to yield results, which will mean that antivirus companies will be given a common interface for most of these uh, protectors. and. Using the interface, the license it can be queried so that they won't have discrepancy in their implementation of licenses. There will be um, there will be a watermark level encryption of licenses in the given EXA. The license information will be embedded in the middle of certain blocks. So if we find out that the license was illegally released, we can send them back the license, and they will know who to tell, who to watch, maybe look inside the company for people who illegally released. The EXA is running in a virtual environment because the supposition is that a virtual environment means that we want emulation for some reason. And lots of automatic emulation systems are out there, which are based on QMU and other V32 emulators are used, such as with VMware. It is possible to know that the video card can be queried, whether it includes the free trial uh, string. And uh, we don't even need difficult tricks. It's quite sim uh, simple to do. And the antivirus emulator is different from the native machine in that it doesn't include the full kernel of 32 that is with Windows XP, for instance. It's very easy to check fixed bytes in a different approach than when you gather information for exploits. You check a certain service pack, and even in the case of many instances of Windows XP, and they will check the SEH entry point, and they will look for additional C3. 
every normal kernel 32 uh, will include that and you can set a threshold as to the size in bytes and normally an antivirus emulator would not uh, load the full Windows 32 emulator kernel and they will not find the relevant uh, bytes and uh, what they will do is abort the program. They will just exit. And as I mentioned, lots of freeware application makers want some kind of protection for their technology, but they're giving away their software. So they don't want to spend money on this. So they will use a free packer. But most of the time, these packers uh, come from the gray area and they're on malware and they're added to normal programs and we must be ready for that and, and use heuristics and other detection methods to avoid false detections for EXEs uh, whereas they're actually clean. It's even a bigger problem that malware writers found out. Uh, there was natural evolution uh, a few years ago. First of all, they like to use publicly available hack uh, packers and uh, internet available packers. And then we can also recognize them and uh, collect them. So first, they went in the following direction. Open source uh, codes were modified to a minimum extent, and then there were small variations. They reached a point where the source code no longer needed to be modified. They could write their own applications, and to this day, this is the most current practice. There are malware families that use the same custom packer, and there are people who maintain this. And they're not clearly mounted on the internet the World Wide Web. Everything has a, a price. In China, we can send someone to crack um, a mailbox, and there's a price for a Gmail uh, or a China uh, Chinese ma mailbox. And EXE uh, packers can also be uh, cracked and turned into a custom uh, packer. And then we could get support in exchange for cracking it. And then we will let our customers know that we want X more weeks of support because a virus was detected. And then the virus is changed. And then, uh, again, there is a, an extension of deadline. And our spam and malware can be propagated uh, without restrictions. So we've gone this far. And it's making our life difficult uh, because we don't have the source and we can't generate um, examples using simple uh, programs. All we have is the perpetrated uh, malware and we can only check the consequences of their operations and they are members of several malware families and malware has its own evolution uh, changing on a daily or weekly basis and the packers are changing and technology is improving all the time and a benefit for us which goes back into the world of protectors. After a while, developers understood that we don't need uh, Windows 32 fully operational EXE. So all the import and export tables, all the instructions, workable, even runnable, that's not our objective. Our goal is to reach a level where we can penetrate uh, this layer and analyze the binary code. And that requires at least one import table so that we can um, upload it and disassemble it. If we see what functions are called, we are lucky. But we need to find certain strings to hint that this is malware. And even that much may not be necessary in that case. A bit of statistics about what this looks like. And this is a quarterly internal collection we had. You can see the custom packers. They belong specifically to one or more malware families. And on the right-hand side, 
you see the packers uh, that somebody procured and that propagates over the internet and of the top three you can easily see that the sample was in the range of one or two million based on a quarterly selection and if you consider that uh, writing one well written um, heuristic detection and we find you pack 400,000 malware that's very efficient otherwise malware should be recognized one by one based on you pack I'd like to add that there are certain localization based benefits you pack is a very small packer a simple encryption uh, program uh, developed by a Chinese uh, developer. Uh, it has a few tricks, almost like an anti-bugger, but it is a very efficient uh, compression program, and it's widespread in China. A lot of people use UPAC. So false positive alerts have a lot to do with this because we are not so keen on recognizing these, but uh, it's not important in Europe. It's important in China. In China, it would be a mistake to blacklist it, but in Europe it isn't because 99% of detections include malware. And you can see nicely here that with one detection, lots of representative uh, patterns and samples from a family can be identified and also in tips. Jampack 132 in the third line. That means the 132nd uh, generic recognition of the packer. So we must keep up with the developers. Now, almost closing the presentation. We can question the importance of the full packer category, whether we need this or not. It's clearly turned out that we don't necessarily welcome them, and we may not want to see them necessarily because lots of people don't know that they're on their machine, and many people have come across them. Most people have, actually, because they are there transparently. But if we lean toward the malware family, and we don't so much want to see them, on our machine and of course what they want I mean uh, protections and uh, protectors what we want is to provide better protection uh, for the applications that we want to defend so we cannot do anything about this because it's uh, the generators uh, the, uh, the developers objective and we'd like to have from the old days uh, the IEEE uh, project. So it would be a very nice idea to give us a um, uniform interface so that we can decide whether they're um, infected or not. Third party issues are very important as well because m many people who release a free application will not spend on packers like uh, in torrent for instance a few hundred kilobytes is the size of the application based on compression so these will be around malware certainly won't disappear not in the near future nor in the distant future so custom packers will continue to be applied certainly and this is a very well-developed business because they can generate cash out of this and they can dynamically include their own ideas rather than if they had to wait for a commercial product and wait until technology is updated and then somebody uh, should mount uh, on the web their licensed copy. So what they do is they frequently update their own code and there is a funny category that's recently emerged. The flash drives are very frequent, seven, eight gigabytes worth. I think everyone in the room has at least two. And with these portable applications sprang into being, these are following the purpose of installing an application which is a portable and you copy one exe on your 
memory key and it's like a fully functional installed application because if you uh, are using somebody else's uh, computer you don't have to mess with the registry or in fact uh, the machine it's very sophisticated now it is it's running under the name vmware thin up so actually we have a mini virtual file system a mini virtual registry and most of mo most of the events to take place in the memory should we get out any component from memory uh, if we so if we want to have access then we should get something out of memory we start the machine from flash drive uh, and everything is packed in memory and that's it. And before the demo, uh, I'm, uh, I may, may uh, take a look into the future. Uh, we, uh, we, the white category uh, is here to stay. In addition to the technology, they will change uh, the packing algorithm. Uh, because they would like to produce as little binary space as possible. Uh, so it's, there is a competition how they can really uh, pack the library, how they can optimize the library, and how they can optimize the, sm uh, the code to, to have the smallest one. Uh, there's quite a number of firms dealt with it. We can't do too much with malware families. Uh, yet more tricks to avoid detection uh, is expectable uh, and uh, uh, they move forward uh, at a good pace and uh, from time to time they pull uh, very good tricks out of their uh, bootleg. They uh, make it more difficult to recognize them in binary form, it will stay as far as defense is concerned. Uh, protection is concerned, then uh, the present machine is much faster. Ten years ago, these virtual, uh, these defenses on virtual machines would uh, use up lots of processor time uh, because the procedures uh, were magnified and. Uh, and uh, then uh, if there is a small native code, then uh, many th tens of thousands of CPU cycles must be really e evoked. It doesn't mean any problem when we start to initialize the machines, but uh, with the, p the increase of the speed and performance of the machines, uh, such as f flash drives and other hardware devices, the price go down. Uh, we may go back to the hardware key period. If it's cheap to produce any hardware, uh, flash drives up to one, two gigabyte, and lots of things can be on it. It is encrypted, it is packed. Most of the code can be loaded on it and cannot be retrieved because it's not on the native machine. Mm. Uh, people who try to mod modify these codes and would like to to uh, mine uh, uh, these codes uh, uh, will have difficult uh, uh, job to do. How many more minutes do I have? Anybody here? Two to three minutes. Let me just show you two demos at the same time. It's, it, it's going to be so interactive that you will get dizzy. <laughs> One extreme is about text application, um, a compact, show in a compact way in the header, there is a pack string. It doesn't say anything in itself, but from the bytes, you can see that as far as entropy is concerned, it's a high level of entropy. This is packed, this is binary. And we may take a look at it, and entry point will show itself. This unpacking takes about this much time, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. A normal esetben végben van állítva breakpointom, az, az első kódeszük annyi, egy sima tömörítő, egyetlen egy szükkötő. If I have a breakpoint here, 
it's a packer. It uses an exception at the beginning, sets it, gives control to it, which gives back control to this code. And at the very end, uh, there is a, a jump instruction. Uh, it works. It processes all import export tables and goes back to the original code. This was test application. Can be memory dump can be prepared. Uh, the sample can be analyzed, uh, and then we can reset import tables uh, in a dumped form, hexadecimal, and so on and so forth. Headers are here because they are part of memory, but. Uh, uh, the the stuff that was here is encrypted and it runs. I could show you. Uh, I have one minute to show you the scanner, the use of the scanner, internal scanner. These are the categories that are uh, actually recommended for an antivirus firm to write for nat native programs. And if it runs, then there is an exported decompacted uh, object here, and one exported object, and it is unpacked. With native code, without emulation, uh, know, knowing uh, decompacting, uh, encryption, and so on, all the processes. That was the first example. Here I stopped de debugging it. The second example will be uh, two parts will be shown to you. I dumped it before, so it's not totally interactive, not properly interactive. It belongs to the same family. Two samples, entry points. The code is of a different kind. Uh, it is um, packed. Uh, there are some deceiving strings. Ashpak is somewhere in the header characteristics. It is just a deception for the generator. There is no, uh, it has nothing to do with aspect. That's what it called this section. A simple trick is shown here. This is a DLL. The first lines utilize the initialization of certain registers on the native computer, subtracts two registers from another couple of bit tests, and if this condition is not met, then the next instruction generates an exception, and it will jump out of the sample. Nothing will happen. If it's good, then initialization will take place, which shows that fully antivirus engine must fully emulate uh, Windows 32 loader with all special functions, uh, which Windows does when loads in an exit. Registers are initialized, exception handler built up uh, with such a simple trick to defend it. And then two layers. This part is packed, but independent of this, where it, has it gone? This is uh, one layer unpacked. It would, would be it would take long to debug because there are 20, 10 to 20 loops with several thousand of instructions. It is still packed, but when a full emulation is done, then it is an interpretable code. And as I said before, import tables are not restored, but on the basis of strings, you can see browser names, HTLM communication strings, and if we go down, then antivirus names can be identified. Bruce will uh, autograph his book for two more minutes. And uh, two more minutes, and then Bruce waits for you, for those who wants to have uh, his autograph on his book. I don't have to analyze it any further. It will execute uh, um, 
malignant thing and uh, this would be the demo, demo whoever has questions stay here who wants to uh, run to Bruce to autograph his book should run otherwise I'm open to discussion thank you there are some books in front of the staircase if you would like to pick them up